So welcome again to Chemistry, It Is All That Matters, and today we're going to talk about electron configurations. Now electron configurations are a method of identifying the location of the electrons in the atom of an element without having to draw out the Bohr atom. And as we said with the Bohr atom model, it doesn't really work beyond the 18th, maybe the 20th element. Um, when you're getting into the D blocks and the F blocks and larger arrangements of the atoms, those atoms would get so big and so bulky and the Bohr atom model just really doesn't work. So this method will allow us to understand where the electrons can be found, but also it works best with all of the elements on the periodic table. So we're going to use our periodic table to figure out how electrons can be arranged and here is um, a diagram or a picture of the periodic table we are using in this class. However, we're going to change that um, image slightly by drawing out the periodic table in this manner. And what we're looking at is the orbitals or the clouds where electrons are found associate to where the elements are located on the periodic table. Now the first thing we're going to look at is this, these first two columns of the periodic table, the alkali metals and the alkaline earth metals, they form what is called the S orbitals. And S orbitals are spherical in shape and they hold two electrons, thus the two columns of the periodic table. And we're actually going to complete the two columns by taking helium, which is located right here, and we're going to slide helium over and fill out that space right there. So helium actually acts as one of the alkaline earth metals for this situation. The big purple region over here on the right, the six columns of the P block, would represent a region of the second and third and uh, orbitals beyond the second and third levels. And the P block will hold up to six electrons. So remember when we were talking about the Bohr model, the first row is two electrons, second and third row will hold eight electrons, uh, two from the S and six from the P. Now this blue region in the center is called the D block, and these are the D block electrons, and there are ten columns to the D block giving us ten possible electron spaces. And then we have the actinide and lanthanide series which form what are called the F block, and the F block will hold up to 14 electrons. So basically the orbital blocks and electron counts can be associated directly to the placement of the element on the periodic table. And once again we're going to take helium which is over here on the far right at the top of the noble gas column and we're going to move helium into this empty space at the top of the alkaline earth metals making it 1s2. So we have first row s block 1 and 2, second row s block 1 and 2, the second row p block which goes 1 through 6, 3s1 and 2, 3p1 through 6, 4s. Now notice in the d block the 3 is one level lower for the d block the 4 is one level lower for the D block, and so on. And then when we look at the F block, the F block would actually fit right here, right here between the D1 and D2 element, and the D1 and D2 elements of the fifth and sixth row. We won't use that F block too often, but you do need to understand that they're actually part of the upper region of the periodic table and would fit in this region right here. Now when we are filling in the electron notation or the electron configuration there is a defined method of filling in each level of the periodic table and this basically is in one of the ways that you can look at of creating that order. First you fill 1s, then you fill 2s, followed by 2p, then 3s, followed by 3p, then 4s. Now notice we go back to 3d, 4p, 5s, then 4d, 5p, 6s, 
and then we're to 4f, 5d, 6p, 7s, and so on and so forth. But what we're going to look at is not understanding this method or trying to memorize an order. We're going to actually use the periodic table to figure out our electron configurations. So let's start simple. Let's start with lithium. Now lithium is right here on the periodic table. It is located in the second row in the first column. So if we go back to understanding that would be 2s1 and that is how the electron configuration for lithium will have to end as 2s1. So since it's going to end at 2s1, we have to fill in the row ahead of it. So it would also include the electrons from the first row, which would include the 1s2. So this gives us two electrons in the first row, one electron in the second row. That's the three electrons that we get in lithium. The two electrons in the first orbit plus the one electron in the second orbit. So let's try another one. Let's go to boron. Now boron is right here. It is in the first column of the P block, still in the second row. And if we do the Bohr atom model for that, we have two electrons in the first shell and three electrons in the second shell. So these first two electrons represent the first two rows, the first row of the periodic table, and that gives us 1s2. Now the next two electrons come from the s block of the second row, and that would be 2s2. Now boron is in the first row, our first column of the p block in the second row. Second row, p block, first electron. Now boron has five electrons, two in the first, and three in the second for five electrons. Let's do nitrogen. Nitrogen is atomic number seven. It has seven protons and seven electrons in its neutral state. Two electrons in the first shell and five electrons in the second shell. So the first shell is represented by 1s2. The second shell includes 2s2 and 2p3 because nitrogen is in the third column of the p block. Moving on to aluminum. Aluminum is in the third row of the periodic table and it's in the first column of the p block. It has two electrons in the first orbit, eight electrons in the second orbit, and three electrons in the third orbit. So the first orbit represents 1s2. The second orbit includes 2s2 and 2p6 for the eight electrons in the second orbit. The third orbit is 3s2 plus 3p1. Now, for each element, the end of its electron configuration will match its position on the periodic table. So for chlorine, when we go to the periodic table, we know that chlorine is right here, atomic number 17, third row, P block, one, two, three, four, five, fifth column. So when we do the electron configuration for aluminum, or for chlorine, excuse me, we are gonna be in the third row, the P block, fifth column. And every level ahead of that 3p5 has to be filled in. So the 3s2 is filled in, the 2p6 is filled in, the 2s2 is filled in, and the 1s2 is filled in, giving us 2, 4, 10, 12, 17 electrons. If we move down to calcium, calcium is in the fourth row. It's in the s block, second column. 
4s2 is the end of its electron configuration. All electron levels ahead of that must be filled in 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and 4s2 represents the position of calcium on the periodic table, fourth row, s block, second column. So let's look at sulfur. Sulfur is located right here on the periodic table. It is in the third row of the periodic table. It is in the P block and it is in the fourth column of the P block. So we know that sulfur has to end at 3P4. Third row, P block, fourth column. The 3S level here has to rep be represented as 3S2. The row above, 2P, must be filled in, 2P6, as well as the 2S2. And the first row of the periodic table must also be filled in, 1S2. Germanium. So germanium brings us to right here on the periodic table. Fourth row, also known as the fourth energy level, P block, second column. Fourth row, P block, second column. That's how the electron configuration must end. Now this gray region here of the transition metals, that's the D block, but remember that the third D block is one level lower, so it is part of the fourth row of the periodic table. And there are 10 electrons in that 3D block. The 4S2, 3P6, and 3S2 must be filled in. The 2P6, 2S2, and 1S2 must be filled in. This is the electron notation or configuration for germanium. So here we have iron. Iron is located right here on the periodic table. It is part of the D block and it is the sixth column of the D block. So why don't you write out the electron configuration, electron notation for iron and turn off the video, write it out and then come back and see how you did. Welcome back. So we know that it has to end as 3D6. Third row third block of the D block, third level of the D block, sixth column, six electrons, 4s2, 3p6, 3s2, 2p6, 2s2, 1s2. All of these levels must be filled in ahead of where the element is located on the periodic table. So here we have krypton. Go ahead and fill in krypton write it out, turn off the video now, and then come back and see how you did. So welcome back. If we find krypton on the periodic table, it is right here located as one of the noble gases. It is in the fourth energy level or fourth row of the periodic table. It is in the P block sixth column. So we know it is going to end as 4P6. Before that, we have to have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. We also fill in 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, followed by 3d10, and then the 4p6. All noble gases will end as p6 because remember, noble gases are stable because their outermost energy level or orbital is filled. 2 plus 6, giving it 8. Now these electron configurations are getting longer and longer, so there must be a shorthand way to do this. And in the next video, we're going to talk about a thing called noble gas notation or core notation, which will give us an, an avenue to shorthand this, to shorten this and make it a little easier to work with. Keep working on your chemistry.